John Sturat. How do you say Sturat? You like uh, Sturat? Steer it. Steer it. Yeah, steer, steer it, steer it like up. A car. Steer it like steer it up. I, you know, I, I don't. I don't go that way. I <laughs> usually just say like steer it like a car. They're gonna expect somebody like you know. You know, Aston Family Man Barrett or something. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to give. No I don't disappoint anybody. <laughs> Family Man, he can play the bass, though, right? Oh God, he's amazing. He's like that rhythm rhythm section is like the best ever. That was good. Maybe because yeah. they were brothers. Yeah, I think that helps. Do you have that brothers? Always work. I do. Yeah. Not, did you, did you he's play with semi musical? A little bit too too old to really like be in bands together. Too much of an age difference. Okay. But, but uh, but you know, he's got. He's got soul, but he never, you know, he's always playing like brass instruments and stuff. So okay. I never really, you know, no, 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 no uh, ability to have a rhythm like sort of thing, you know, bass you, and drum. Do you feel like uh, this band is your brothers now? Yeah, for sure. You know, it's like, um, I mean, you know, I mean, it's been so, so many years, you know, that there's definitely, uh, you know, we have so many hours of doing it together and day, you know, so many years of that I'm sure it's like, um, it's absolutely that way, you know, I mean, I've been singing with, I mean, well, even with Pat, who I do do Autumn Defense with, that's been, we've been doing that for 12 to 15, 12 years, but then with Jeff, it's been, you know, and then, you know, so it sucks singing with the same people for a for a pretty long time, for twenty something <laughs> yeah, years. Were, I mean, you were what the last yeah, Tupelo record, right? I, I was on the last one, yeah. And, and I, I was I was a big fan. I would kind of, you know I was like a kind of a fanboy. I would kind of follow them around, and they let me in the band after a while. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, well, I, I played something from AM the other day. That record came out in 1995. That's yeah. like three years from Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. <laughs> oh my God, you guys! God, I, that it doesn't. That's weird. It's yeah, not no. so much Qualifies, weird that that's that long ago. It's it, that it's like two, 2016. That's what's really weird. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a long time now. So but, when Star Wars came out, uh, everybody was surprised. Were you? Uh, you well, you know, not really. I was, I was in the know. I was like, that would be really hilarious to not tell the band. That would be, that would be genius, that would, actually. That would be the I think that's that's the next, that's the next thing is that's not you. tell anyone else in the band or in the organization. Do it before Radiohead yeah. does it. You could kind of do it. You know, you yeah. could kind of do that. Yeah. But um, no, we you know, a few people were in the know, and uh, and uh, it was. It was so. It was. It was really like. It was so freeing in many ways because just to not, the you know the typical rollout of, of a record now is just so um, atypical. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it is now, but justifiably because in a way there's no there's no emphasis or anything or very often validation put onto the record as right. a piece of art anymore. Right. So why it's you know so why is there this elaborate rollout you know for you know that's the way that people look at it at least from a business standpoint mm -hmm. i think and uh so you know it's just like let let the people hear it first let's I, just let it like don't make it such a big deal you know because <laughs> well, well, it's obviously not a big deal to you know and you it's know, the record don't companies who it. don't understand that it's the it's the big record companies because yeah. it's, it's changed we don't yeah. need a big rollout radio doesn't need a big rollout we don't need a big hype campaign a lot of people's jobs depend on it and, and that's, that's just what it's about it's, uh -huh. a, it's, a, it's an industry that's and, the way and, it's uh, been I, I, when i hear available for download it's just not sexy you know, no, it's just, not. You're right. Oh. It really isn't. You know, but uh, but it is. It is just. It's nice also not to deal deal with the with the reviewers and you know. So often we would find also that's when the leaking happened when we were trying to you know in that in that period in the mid 2000s when you're trying to like trying to hold on to the Jimmy, information Jimmy. and um, generally that's when all the leak leaks would happen is when you when you send out these these copies to reviewers and you know. Jimmy has a whole room wallpapered with cease and desist orders. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so that, then it comes out, and, and did you have expectations of what would happen uh, when you did it this way? Not Was really. there a lot of debate about how you were going to go about this? Uh, no, I think, you know, Jeff and, Jeff and Tony, our manager, you know, had a, had a, you know, had a really, like, pretty clear idea of how it would go, go down. And, uh, you know... It, I, I don't there was there's definitely there's trust there you know trust with our management and everything there, there's also this feeling of you know I think embracing the kind of wild west the w the way the the, re the music world is now and just not having that sort of you know just the ability it's sort of it's sort of yeah liberating and if if people dig it if the, then then it's really gonna come back in a great way but to see that instantaneous uh, response to it 
was uh, just, I think, you know, I mean, we, we, you know, our fans are, they're nice, you know, I think they would, they, you know, they would, they, we wouldn't be completely trashed out, you know, but, <laughs> but there was, there was a great sort of response to it and, and, um, and, you know, it was, it was definitely turned, turned the tables in many ways in terms of the classic album rollout you know yeah well from the uh from the fan uh point of view you know it's just like you wake up and oh look here's some new wilco music that's yeah. amazing yeah you know because there's no expectation that oh this is coming this is coming i think it's going to be like this or that or this no i have expectations of what i expect from the band and then it's just it's just here and it's on me and then yeah. Right like that. You don't have yeah. to leave your bedroom. It's fun. Bang, I got Wilco. It's it's fun. It really is. Yeah, a whole bo- a whole record, you know. And uh, and uh, there was something that was really fun about it. I think more more than anything, it was like um, I think it was really funny to see uh, reviewers try to review it on the fly. And so, I, well, let me get back to you. I'm kind of halfway <laughs> through the review. I, I think I like it, but let me get back to you. So it, it it's really it puts people on this kind of especially those people in those kind of jobs that we talked about and that sort of you know that you know certain pub, you know publicists and reviewers it puts them on shaky ground in a lot of ways it right. really makes people really make make statements so you have to yeah. you have to say i like yeah. this or i don't like I, it I, now, I, now i have fun. to be relevant yeah. too yeah. <laughs> really <Yeah>. quick <laughs> <laughs> i have to mean something <laughs> wow you guys you, put on your own festival for a time yeah so yeah. it sounds going to come back next year it is yeah it's going to come back next year as far as um, I'm, we don't have the date set but we're we're planning on it and um it's a great you know not too far away really from here at all it's it's a great uh community there yeah you can see in, the berkshires from the top Adams, of the hunter I mean, here man it's just like you know last few times i've driven berkshires down and, and they almost just butt right up to the catskills they like do that. it's like incredible yeah town like like Canaan New York is that where that is like around that area and stuff and yeah it's it's um it's a really beautiful part of the country and and we you know uh, mass mocha uh, you know we, we felt like there was there's really we really couldn't lose having that amazing of a facility to have it in um, in, the, in the courtyards it's really intimate shows whereas if, if you don't if you don't like what's going on just wander into the museum and see some world-class art you know just see some you know <laughs> or Glenn and, uh, banging on things yeah the, or the <laughs> pop it just um there there's just such an unbelievable joe thompson the the director and his and his staff and all the people there they they really promote just this sort of um this this attitude that's very uh very off the cuff in a way that it's i can't the, imagine they, it's, it's really about the art it is absolutely at that place but they're not precious about the space or anything like that right i mean they're particular and that's what you that's what's so hard to find in the museum world i would imagine on I mean, everywhere else in big city museums did and they approach you guys or did you guys approach we, them with we, this idea um you know i think we we originally i remember the first time we played tanglewood uh-huh. and we thought wow we could that do was a great a really show. nice I was there, man that was awesome you know all these off out buildings there and yeah. you're like we could do a cool one day festival you know and and i don't know if we ever actually talked to them but at some point joe and tony and, and our management now is in Northampton, so they were close, yeah. and they met. And Joe was like, "Let's do it. Let's bring it on," you know, because he's always been incredibly pro music. David Byrne has done a lot of a lot of shows there, and Laurie Anderson actually has a gallery, a uh, permanent gallery that's going to um, be a part of the expansion, which is happening next summer too, as well in in connection with Solid Sound. So it's it's, it's amazing it's a dream it's, it's, it's such a natural place uh when, when you go there and experience it's like of course this should happen you know and you get to walk up into that uh that airstream and yeah. play records in there it's just incredible and i mean you're not going to believe the expansion i was just up there a couple of weeks ago and it's phenomenal yeah. just from an ar- architectural standpoint yeah. it's phenomenal and then the bands you guys curate the bands yeah right? Yeah, and it's you know it's one thing we've learned. It's competitive to get bands <laughs> to get the, every weekend the festival you can be world with being what it is. Yeah. It's really it's it's been it's been a challenge, but people enough people have wanted to do it, and and again it's um you know we we do have you know, with all of our members we have a lot of connections with different different genres and Nell, Nell's and the jazz world and everything to be able to to find some interesting. Uh, artists and pairings of artists too, you know, and so we're gonna we're gonna keep at it. It's yeah. great that you decided every other year. 
Yeah, it comes around, as you know, yeah, right. like this comes around fast. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it seems faster than Christmas. You it know does. what I mean? Yeah. It's like, you know, on, on all the all the major, like, uh, you know, I have friends who, at the Jazz Fest, and I mean, like a week after it's done, they're just like back at it. And it's yeah. just like, and it, it also sort of, we, we also sort of have to, we can't play that much in the Northeast on, summers that we are doing it we just feel like it's a better idea to remain a little scarce that mm-hmm. some, so so you know it's kind of hard to do that every summer too you know so you guys have a busy schedule this summer um we do we have we're back we're back really uh back in europe twice this year once for a month starting in a couple of weeks from now actually um a lot of festivals um all over countries we haven't played montenegro poland um, Poland, you know huh? Poland, yeah, which is like—is it winter or summer there? You know, it's—I heard it's—I heard it's incredible. I heard it's not—I heard it's like this. I heard it's super lush and uh, and. Uh, I don't but, think um, that's the question. The question is: Is it 2016 there or yeah, is it yeah. 1986 there? Yeah, we'll find out. Uh-huh. You know, but uh, it's going to be fun. Is that Dennis or Carl? Oh, this is Dennis. Dennis, look yeah. at that. He's got yeah. a, a Dennis Wilson from the Beach Boys t-shirt on yeah. that's, uh, that's pretty yeah. special right it's, there it's it's cool yeah some friend we were trying to remember someone made them for us years ago and i, I had it on today and they're like who made them we're trying to figure out who, who brought these to us but so if you're out there you know send, us, send us some carl wilson <laughs> <laughs> john <laughs> from, forgotten uh, forgotten wilson brothers you know because we need john stared from wilco uh, you're playing tonight at 8 30 here at mountain jam we had uh, jeff tweedy and uh his son last year and we've That's got right. the full-on band this year, and we're really happy about it. You guys you have, have a all... set list. Yeah, yeah. Are you going to play a list? lot? You're going to play a lot of the new one, right? Uh, yeah. Do a lot yeah. of Star Wars stuff. Yeah, yeah. We are, we are going to do a lot of it. I don't know if we're going to do the whole thing, but we're going to do a lot of it. You Good. know, for sure. Good. Yeah. You guys also contributed a track to the. Uh, latest Grateful Dead tribute album called Day of the Dead. That's right. The brothers oh, from the awesome. National. Yeah, that's right. Put it together, Aaron and Bryce. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the Red Hot organization we've had a long history with, Paul Heck, and those people, really cool people and great music fans. Well, you did uh, St. Stephen with Bob Weir. What was oh, that yeah. like? Oh, yeah. Oh, it was incredible. Well, that whole Americana Rama summer um, was really amazing because it was Bob on a lot of the shows and, um, and uh, just to... You know, I mean, he was just game for anything, which was incredible. Really? And like, everybody was saying, you know, trying to say, hey, let's... And, and you know what? I think it was his idea. I think that one was his idea. But we kept throwing dead songs, and we would woodshed them all day. And he would get out there, and, 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 and uh, he, he, he's, you know, he's, he's just totally totally up for it up for anything and we that one I remember in particular it was like band camp the whole the whole because we were doing covers with different people and we did I think we did the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald in wow. Duluth Minnesota with with Lowe I mean we were every day was a new song and it was like kind of all day running tunes it was really fun it was um, but uh, St. Stephen's was one of the one of the uh, trickiest but also the kind of scariest because we were at Shoreline and and before before the show, one of the one of the um, one of the roadie oh, I'm sorry, one of the crew guys who who probably who did a lot of dead shows. Ooh. He was of the age. Walked up and he goes, "You're going to do it in the house, huh?" <laughs> and that's kind of all he said. And we were like, uh, "I I guess so." That's, that's we're going to exa- give advantage. it a try. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you do something like that, and do you get a deeper appreciation for someone like Phil Lesher? You might have had a oh yeah, great appreciation I mean, for I've, already. I'm definitely. I, I I mean, just the whole. It, it's just. Um, it's so giant. The legacy is just so giant, and uh, like kind of talking to Bob about, well, do you want it more like like se- do you want it more like seventy four? Do you want more like eighty or you know or? And, and Bob and, probably said, I want to see how you do it. Yeah, yeah. He was. I mean, he's amazing. He was, it was, it was fantastic. Well, it came out pretty good, and um, we'll send John your way. I know you got some business to attend to, and uh, we'll play it for the folks. How about that? That sounds great. Thanks, John. Thanks We're looking a lot. forward to the show tonight. Thanks so much. We'll go with Bob Weir, Radio Woodstock 100.1. What do you guys think about uh, electronic remixes of, of all your songs and starting with a beat instead of a band? We were like, okay, so <laughs> two completely different things. But he, what, his, what his point was, was... Like it's, we listen to music, we weep and we wail. The joy times, the joyous times and the saddest times. Weddings and funerals. Yeah. And you know, you write the songs that hopefully, you know, that can be played at both, you know, uh, or that things that.